Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. Welcome back to the garage. So, the time is now 25 to 3 in the afternoon. I've been working all day. Um, long list of things that I needed to get through. Um, and already this morning I've been doing uh, plasterboarding. So I've finished the last bit of plasterboarding, which is in the, the, the wardrobe in the master bedroom. Um, I've been filling cracks in plaster, um, I've been cleaning things and planning and drawing up plans for how I'm going to build my workbench which with a bit of luck I can get the materials for or at least to start it uh, today. Um, uh, which means I've finally got back round to looking at the motor on the dehumidifier. Well. That was the capacitor that was on it, that appeared to test okay, but I thought it might have been the problem. I have purchased and fitted a new capacitor um, of the same specification. I mean, it seemed to go straight on, it looks right, the readings, the, the, the markings look near identical. It made no difference. <laughs> um, so if the motor doesn't turn, all my efforts on the dehumidifier are of no benefit. You've watched me try to strip this motor before. Um, I got as far as I could and I could not get any further with this fan on. And the fan is seized solid and it's rusted in place. I think the only thing I can do is a last ditch effort is I'm going to get brutal with this. Um, heat, although well, I was reluctant to use heat because I think this is aluminium and I don't want to start melting this. Um, I can hit it harder, I can put more lubricant on it, I can try cleaning it up more. I might just give another half an hour's effort to get that off. If I succeed, I can look closer inside the motor. If I can't get it off, or, more likely, if my attempts to get it off damage this, game over. I think I was probably wasting my time to begin with, but either way, um, I'm going to give it a final effort. Then I'm going to call it quits on the dehumidifier. I think, I think I was probably on a hiding to nothing with that one, but if you don't try, you don't know. All right, last ditch attempts at this. Where's my bigger hammer? Supporting it in the workbench so that the motor is hanging below freely. That is as supported as possible. I need to hit down on that shaft and try and shock it. The grub screw is backed right right off. Let's try a sensible sized hammer to begin with. Not, not the biggest, just sensible. But I have been through this once before. And where's my... There's my extension that fits over there like that. Maybe I'll pull down on that slightly as well. Well, exactly as I expected. I'm working on this. I'm trying so hard not to damage it, but the aluminium has just buckled. So, I now think, even if I could get the motor to spin, I don't think I could realistically put this back together. Time to call it quits. And there's the conclusion. It's gone. <laughs> it's scrap. I'll be buying another one. So, with the air conditioning system now uh, ready for the dump, um, I have switched my attention 
and been out and decided instead to work on my workbench. I've been shopping. All right, let's get that unloaded and um, see if I can't fashion it into some form of workbench over the next 24 hours. Right, it's now Sunday morning. Um, I'm gonna make a start on making a workbench. So, first things first, let's move the bike out of the way, create some floor space, because I'm gonna need a little bit of space to do this. Um, and I've been given a lot of thought to the construction methods of this workbench. Um, so I've just gone and bought raw timber and um, actually a kitchen uh, top. Um, and I've sat down and I've planned meticulously how I'm going to build it. Um, I've given thought to should I use um, tenon joints, should I use um, dove house uh, joints. Um, and then having given that careful consideration, I remembered I haven't cut either of those two since I was about 15 in school. Um, so this will be constructed using lots of glue and large screws. That method. Right, so my plan for today is to build it using a worktop. Um, I bought a worktop, um, it's advertised as being 2.4 metres, it isn't, it's 2.45 um, and the ends are unfinished. Now presumably you're expected to cut that down and you get a small amount of wastage. I'm going to use it all. Um, so I'm going to cut the main area to the length I want, which is one and a half metres. Um, I think that will fit nicely into the alcove here. Um, but I've got a plan for the off-cut, so we'll see how we get on with that. But that's secondary. So for now, I'm going to take one and a half metres off, which leaves me with um, almost one metre left, or 95 centimetres to be slightly more precise. So let me mark that up, and then let's raid my tool cupboard. I've tried to be sensible here. I've tried to support the bench on both ends. I've tipped it over so I'm cutting down through the decorated side. I've put masking tape down to try and stop it splintering the top surface. Um, and I've caref carefully marked it. Now, I think I'm ready. Um, I was about to use the traditional saw, the old, old method. And then I remembered, actually, I don't need to. I can borrow this. Uh, it's my wife's. <laughs> Firstly, please don't ask why she's got power tools because I don't think I could give you a good answer. Um, but she has and um, she's not looking. So let's crack on with it. About 15 seconds after I turned the camera off, uh, my wife came out to the chest freezer that's in the room, sort of behind the garage, and um, I got caught. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, um, let's put it back in its box and uh, let's pretend like that didn't happen. Well, for the legs, I've chosen a height of 112 centimetres, which with the worktop's going to make the bench height 115. Um, gone back to the manual saw, uh, purely because the blade of the circular saw isn't deep enough to go through this in one cut. It's just as easy to do it this way. Okay, so next I need two side supports. The total width of the table is going to be 150 centimetres. I need to minus the width of the legs, which is a total of 14, so this needs to be 136 centimetres, which I've marked, um, using a set square, because I'm sure as many as you know, <laughs> all saws include a set square, so uh, that there, from that to this, is always 90 degrees. So that is my handy set square, and that should ensure I cut that nice and square. I'll pass 
this piece of timber. Okay, now I need the side bars. Um, I don't want the legs to be right at the very, very front. I want a slight overhang, just about six or seven centimeters. So taking into account the width of the legs, I just need the sidebars at 36 centimeters. So is it 36? Is that all the maths? Uh, no, 41. 41 centimeters. Yeah, this is exactly what I've done. Very far. Yeah, 41. So I need two of those for the ends, and then I'm going to do something different in the middle. Right, let's begin some construction. I don't want to destroy the worktop immediately. So I'll put an old blanket down to protect it as I'm working on the floor. Okay. Now then, in theory, these are gonna go about go there somewhere. These should fit about there somewhere. Something like that. Yep. Okay. Right. She's in there. So, what I actually want is on the back corner, I want that in the corner. Uh, actually, let's look at the floor. Is there anything on the floor I need to concern myself with? No, there's not, but it would make sense if I do have a slight overhang on the back. So let's just take that in by about a centimetre. So we're on this edge, but about a centimetre in from the back. That wants to go in the centre of there, like there's that. Not the same here. So again, about a centimetre from the back. I want to go in the middle, down there. So we will be drilling and screwing and all sorts of things. So the weight is going directly into the legs. And these side pieces, I'm gonna put slightly lower down. So instead of having them at that level, I'm probably going to put them about this level. I think that makes sense because then that will add a little bit of support further down the leg so that sideways it will be more supportive. That is my plan. That is my plan. And then, after it's constructed, I'm going to get some more of these, obviously slightly longer, and I'm going to put probably well, at least one, at least one, in fact maybe just one, it's not a, big, not a big space, I'm going to put one of these in between those to add a little bit of further support in the middle of the bench. Although frankly I don't think that's really necessary, but I can't think of a reason not to do it. That is my plan. Okay, so on every leg, I'm gonna do two holes for the length and then one in the middle. So if you look at the height, those screws going through there are not gonna interfere with that one there. Okay, that's my prep. Let's do that on all the legs and then they should screw together. Okay, that's everything prepped and pre-drilled. So I've got two screws through there, one in that direction. I'm going to glue the whole thing together as well with a good wood adhesive. I've pre-drilled holes in these supports here so that these long screws can go down there and secure into the back, into the top. And I've used some off cuts as well to cut those to go between the legs at this height to give additional rigidity. Okay. I think I'm prepped up. 
time to start gluing and screwing for an half an hour. <laughs> it's all attached so that should should go nowhere now um, the glue reckons it takes about 10 minutes to dry off so I'm shattered I'm gonna get a soft drink that's gonna take me a couple of minutes then I'll try turning it over and hopefully it will all stay together um, we'll see I think it looks pretty solid. Let's do the test. How do you test a bench? I think that will do the job. I'm not expecting to get much on here that weighs as much as me. Excellent. Right. It's freestanding, so I haven't attached it to the wall intentionally because I do have freedom to move it. Um, it could come away from the wall, it could go to the other side of the garage if I need to for any reason. Um, but that's a good solid bench. It's high. Now, I might reduce the height a little, but if I'm here, if I'm working on carbs, if I'm working on something um, that's like precise, it feels right. It feels exactly the height I want. For working on cutting, I think it's right. I think welding is right. It just, to me, it feels good maybe slightly high as I say but if it is I don't know five centimeters maybe easily corrected because I can always cut the legs down but I can't build them up easily so I'm really pleased with that that is a massive milestone towards getting everything back to how I want it to keep working but remember I've got an off cut so I've still got this bit and that is a good sized bit and with this and the stuff I've got lying around I'm gonna try to construct something which sits under here at about that height that if I want to put an engine or something on it I can pull this out and put it on this that is my plan Two benches for the price of one. Right, let's see what I can do. Okay. So, as a bonus freebie, I have just knocked the frame up from off cuts and bits out of the garden and all sorts. Now, this was never in the original plan, but if I can just find a way of attaching that, and I say find a way because I don't have any long screws that will go all the way through here into that. Um, but I'm sure I can do something. Give me a moment, let me see what I can find. And if I can attach that one there, we have a shorter workbench that can store underneath the main one. But also I'm thinking of putting this on some wheels so that it can be, you know, put something on it and then roll it around. That could be a useful addition. Right, let's see if I can attach that to this. And uh, job done. I found some old brackets on some shelving that is no longer required. So I've repurposed them to secure the legs to the tabletop. Here we are. Here we are then. And I've got myself a lower bench as well. Which I'm thinking of putting some wheels on as I said. Wow, okay, so let's see if this now fits under there. Well it obviously will. But let's create some space and put it in place. That's it. I'm a happy boy. 
Um, it's mid-afternoon, so that's probably taken me five hours, I suppose, in total, doing it slowly with interruptions. Um, but I'm really happy with that. So, um, I'm going to start moving my tools and things and welders from that side of the room across to here so they can be set up and ready for use whenever I need them. Um, I don't have power in this corner at the moment, so that is something I still need to address, but it's not the end of the world. I've got power on the other side of the room and plenty of extension cables. So for the short time, I can do with that. Um, I've got things like vices to fit, so you know, I've got, I've got things like this to fit on. Oh, I forgot where that's going now, I'll give that thought. Um, but, so I now think I'm really making progress here. Um, it's beginning to feel like my workshop, not just a garage. Um, so I couldn't be happier right now. Okay, there's a lot of tidying up to do. There's a lot of things just to finish off, but that is all I've got time for today. So I'm gonna call it at that. Um, please everyone, stay safe, take care, like and subscribe if you don't mind, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.